The best doctors and dentists that we have in the world. I especially commend the Christian Medical and Dental Association of Nigeria, TFDA Nigeria, organizing the memorial lecture in honor of this first lady. In 1972, the late Dr. Akano I am happy that you are doing this during the joint national conference and going to the university. I congratulate both the presidents and the leaders and members of the TNGA Nigeria for their sentence. And very important set in the nation in the past 50 years. It is not easy for an association to attain the age of 50. We wish you many more years of service to the nation in healthcare services. I am happy that you have chosen to discuss. The life and times of Dr. Kandi, best CFA Nigeria president. Nigeria is a nation that is specially blessed by the Almighty God. We are endowed with enormous human and material resources. There is hardly any good leader of great importance that is not found in Nigeria. We have the seventh largest population in the world. If we continue to grow at the current projected growth rate, 28 years from now, by 2050, we are most likely going to be the third most populous nation on Earth. It is also estimated that by the turn of the century, in 78 years from now, our population may grow to as many as 1 million people. It is remarkable that whereas in many developed countries, their population is on the decline and the bulk of their people are old. But in Nigeria, the majority of our population are young. This gives us an opportunity to build a very strong economy if we are able to properly educate and provide needed skills for our people. We have the rivers and the long coastline with the Atlantic Ocean. We have very favorable weather conditions and we are located almost at the heart of Africa the second largest continent in the world. We are almost at the distance from the west to the east, as we are from the north to the south of Africa. Our nation has the largest population of black people anywhere in the world. The almighty God that made it possible for Nigeria to become a country wants us to play a major role in the affairs of the world. In order for us to achieve this, we must emulate the life of J. 
dedication to service, commitment to excellence, and devotion to the common good of Dr. Akande. The values of hard work, honesty, justice, fairness, selfless service that are needed for our nation to attain greatness are found in this extraordinary human being. We must always bear in mind that as independents over 50 years ago, three developing countries, Brazil in South America, Nigeria in Africa, and India in Asia, attracted so much attention from the rest of the world in terms of having prospects and potential for attaining true greatness. India has demonstrated tremendous capacity in all areas of technological advancement, including space and nuclear technology. It is expected that the Indian economy will surpass that of the United Kingdom, a former colonial master, in a few years from now. Brazil has established a technological dominance in South America. Nigeria needs these special values so as to attain the greatness destined for her. I am very happy to speak about Dr. Eldon Sack, Ezoko Akane, the Ezoko Isharawan of Omana, and the Otuji of Ubu. What a special gift from our Creator, the Almighty God, to both our country and the world. The dedication to duty and devotion to selfless service are on equal. He was very interested in promoting the well-being of his fellow human beings as he worked tirelessly for the common good. All through his life here on earth, he became a blessing to his parents, family, relations, friends, the local community, the nation, and the world. He was a man, though he had a great time in society, both at home and at work. But yet, he remained simple and humble to the very end. Dr. Akamijam was the second son and last child of his parents, Chief and Mrs. Aka. Of Owara. Owara is a town located on the hilltop by the shore of the majestic Cross River, whose water flows into the mighty Atlantic Ocean. The early missionaries changed the name of the town from Owara to Owana, which means light in Ethiopia. Omana is a town in old African division, which was a part of the Ugoja province in the former eastern region of Nigeria. Later, Abakali province was half out of Ugoja province. With the creation of states, Omana has been a part of independent states, later in most states, after states. And now, a Dr. Akali was a light that could not be needed. He held very important positions in each of these political agencies. He represented Ukoja province in the Legislative Council of Nigeria, also represented Ukoja and later Abakanji provinces in the provincial council and was appointed member of the Security Council of Eastern Nigeria. 
He later became governor of Eastern Victor, chairman of the traditional rulers council of Igbo State, and later Akia State. He did instruct the Africa division that continued to play a very important role in producing prominent Nigerians who have held important political positions in the country. Hence, at different times, Africa division produced the governor of Eastern Region, governor of Asia State, governor of Cross River State, as specifically used to be a part of old Africa division, governor of the Pony State, president of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as well as the secretary to the government of the federation. He started his primary education in his hometown before proceeding to the Bottom Training Institute, Calabar, where he completed his primary school education and spent two years of post primary education. He later gained admission into King's College, Lagos, because as a science inclined student, King's College had greater facilities to perform brilliantly in his academic work and was also active in sports. He became the captain of the college football team. He passed his senior medical certificate examination with distinction in 1924. It is instructed that both Dr. Nnamdi Akinjiwe and Dr. Akinjiwe attended his college, though they were not in the same class. By 1925, he traveled to the United Kingdom and was enrolled at Glasgow University where he studied agriculture. Later, he gained admission into the University of St. Andrews where he studied medicine. He first obtained a degree in science before graduating in medicine in 1934. He was the first African to graduate from the university. He was also active in sports, particularly football, where he was a member of the university's football first 11 team. He was then the first African to be so recognized, and this attracted so much attention from both within and outside the university community. He later specialized in obstetrics and gynecology. He decided to be a missionary medical doctor in the service of the Church of Scotland Mission. This was as a result of his empathy for the needy, poor, downtrodden, and the people derived from his kindness, sympathy, and generosity. By 1934, Nigeria had very few medical doctors. Dr. Indian's decision to serve as a missionary medical doctor was rare but exemplary. He sacrificed the comfort he would have had, serving in hospitals in the urban centers. He was moved by the strong desire to offer selfless service. To those who needed them the most. Dr. Kabe remembered the missionaries who left their homes in Europe and came to visit the rural part of Nigeria. He sacrificed a bigger salary and better working conditions, which he would have had if he did not decide to serve as a missionary medical. On his return to Nigeria in 1935, he started a dispensary in Africa in Asia State, which was later expanded into a hospital. The 
hospital said many other towns, including Ohio, Nipporo, Nigeria, and Nigeria. He was later sent to the church of Southern Mission Hospital in Nigeria. Acquired the position, where he established the school of nursing. From there, he became the first African to serve as chief medical director of the Prince Joint Hospital School in Ebony State. The hospital is older than my children, having been established in 1912 and commissioned in 1913. He worked very hard to establish the hospital as the center of excellence, where people from very distant places came to receive medical treatment. In 1957, he became the first African to serve as principal of his alma mater, Hope Water Training Institute, Harvard. It was from there that he was appointed governor. Eastern region in 1960. As a medical doctor, he always helped the patients not only with medicine to heal them, but also use Christian teachings for their spiritual needs. And I'm so happy with the song that you made us sing. Though he was never ordained to the ministry, when he became an elder of the Christian Church of Nigeria, he served the church in many capacities, including as one of the six presidents of the World Council of Churches, President, Christian Council of Nigeria, founder and president of all African Council of Churches, vice chairman, United Bible Society. Founder of the Nigerian Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Founder and honorary president, Students Christian Movement of Nigeria. Grand Mission, World Women Christian Temperance Union. Member, Administrative Committee of International Missionary Council. Member, Council of the Churches on International Affairs. And member missionaries committee medical board and standing committee of synod of the Presidential Church of Nigeria. He was a man of ideas and great vision. He is reputed to be the first Nigerian to initiate and defend the bill in the Legislative Council of Nigeria for free primary education for all Nigerians. <laughs> Although this bill failed, but certain parts of the country had already been presented. He later became the traditional ruler of this community as a local Isha Man of Home. He promoted the culture of his people, while he was dissatisfied with all superstitious beliefs, he worked hard to stop the killing of queens and promoted many good aspects of the culture of his people, such as the New Young Festival, wrestling, and so on. In 1939, he was married to a special and highly gifted woman. Dora Oradinka Shishibo. Hence, the Christian Manipo was married to a Yoruba woman in 1939. The marriage was blessed with four children. One of them died at an early age. He loved his wife so much had death in 1974 on the Wednesday. The Islam never remarried, but fasted 
every Wednesday of the week until his death on July 1, 1925. To honor. Yeah. 
Because if you are looking at somebody who has represented Christianity in the practice of medicine, Dr. Kennedy has stands out. Somebody who graduated in 1934 and decided on his own that he would be a missionary medicine doctor. Sadly, in rural India, where there is no potable water, no electricity, and all these things. So, this is the appeal that I would like to make to you. And I'll be very happy to give it uh, the advantages. May Almighty God continue to bless this great association and bless our country and place.
So, without wasting time, I, I thought to call those ones, you know, but I won't forget before we do that to call to recognize one of our biggest schools is a friend of the house, is a friend in every way, and a host for us, the chairman of the FCT NME, Dr. Joe Amelie. And this is your house, and we are actually our host. And um, if you talk so that people can see your face very well. The chairman of the National Medical Association, if you want to plan, plan. To do that, I will invite Dr. Chika and the way to hand over this one. So 
So, the one for from Saul, the Lord is a devil. I will call God to our commander the boy to come and hand it over to And the fourth one is for now we invite Dr. Obama to handle this. Um, there are two that you're going to give. Um, it's also the one on this side. Yes. After that, there will be the one of your six members will come out after the two. Um, we'll have a picture of him, um, the governing board, and um, our deeds as well. Those are the six that we have on the video. All right, so the fourth one is to no other person. I mean, before I even mention his name, I also want to recognize somebody that when it looks like everything has gone down, he offered his life to serve as traveling secretary to work with him for years. I met him and he stayed strong around in my life as well. Dr. John Abibi. <laughs> and so we can be able to invite a past UOT chairman, one that served with Dr. And then also became national president. And when he looked like the roots, the tree was dry for decades. He carried it with all the discouragement and is still here with us today. Venerable Dr. Ode Akitabe.
Let's take it out of here. Let's take it out of here. We 